I've helped collectors buy and sell millions in rare collectibles. The sale prices in this video are all backed by real data from top auction houses like Heritage. I know what makes coins and currency valuable and today I'll break it down for you. Have you ever come across a rare $2 bill and wondered how much money it's actually worth? Well in this video I'm going to go over every single thing that you need to know about a $2 bill that will make it rare and valuable starting with this first $2 bill right here from 1976. Now it's very very important to understand that the United States is still making $2 bills to this day. That's right guys, every single year the United States prints more of these $2 bills. Here's the reality, the majority of $2 bills are only worth $2, but what I go over in this video will tell you exactly what to look for and how to maximize the value if you go ahead and sell it because you really don't want to get scammed and ripped off. So with this one right here, there's a few things I want to break down for you. First of all, this is what we call a star note or a replacement note. So at the end of the serial number, you will see a star. To keep a long story short, what that means is that when the US Bureau of Engraving and Printing, which prints paper money, is making $2 bills, what they'll do is they'll produce a run of star notes. Now these star notes are intended to replace any notes during the printing process that got damaged or have errors on them because they don't want those getting out into public hands. Now what does this mean for the value? The value can increase if you have a star note, especially if the serial number is nice and fancy. So this serial number has three zeros, two threes, two nines, and one seven. Kind of a cool serial number, but not that cool. Nobody's going to look at that and say, oh, I need to have those numbers in my collection. Now, if that was a serial number one, or if all the digits in the serial number were a number one, that is something that would increase the value significantly. Also, here's a free tool you can use called starnotelookup.com. We'll show you a picture of what that looks like so you can go there type in the year type in the serial number on your bill and you can see if your star note is rare or not this one because it got graded by PMG at a 67 someone turned this little two dollar bill into 192 dollars I'll be brief on this one but this is a 1976 bicentennial release that has a first day of issue stamp on it which will increase the value the bicentennial release means it's the 200th anniversary of the United States founding in 17 76, marking the bicentennial, 200 years, of the signing of the Declaration of Independence, which is a pivotal moment in American history. So pretty much how this worked is on the release day of April 13th, 1976, people could bring their new $2 bill to any participating post office and get it postmarked. This postmark would serve as a first day of issue stamp. What's cool about these is they would include the city and the state and sometimes a first day of issue marking. Some people say, was this legal? Yes, it was perfectly legal to get the postmark on a $2 bill. However, not every post office participated, and some did not participate as much as others. So certain post offices in small towns or really cool, uniquely named towns are more scarce and valuable. On top of this, you can see the serial number on the right is a bit misaligned. It's shifted down, which will increase the value a bit. This one's from Shiloh, Ohio, and it sold for 216 bucks. So remember earlier I was talking about fancy or cool serial numbers? Well, this one sort of has that, right? You've got a bunch of zeros, one three, and it's a star note on top of that. This is a 2003 $2 bill, and someone was able to cash this bad boy in for $312. This is pretty unique. So this is an uncut sheet of four $2 bills. And back in the day, you could get these from the US BEP as a collector's item. Nowadays, when they're printing paper money, they print in 100 subject sheets of bills, which is a huge sheet of paper money. And I know this because I've had a ground floor tour of the Bureau of Engraving and Printing, which was such a great experience. But this sheet of bills was able to sell for $930. That's a pretty good return on your investment for a face value of only $8. $1,560. Now I do want to show you on the back right hand side of this bill, you're going to see what we call a plate position. Now the plate position is mainly an internal number where employees employees can see where this specific bill was located on a printing plate. Now sometimes the printing plates for the back and the front of the bill will get mismatched. So on certain types of paper money, the size of the back plate number versus the size of the front plate position number will matter. The front plate position is located in two spots. You've got it in the bottom right hand side of the front of the bill and the top left hand side. In this instance, you've got an F4 at the top left and an 
iPhone F10 in the bottom right. Now you can see the size of the numbers on the front compared to the back are different, but unfortunately this was as intended on this specific bill. There are going to be some instances where they're different and that means it's a mule note. And mule notes can be very rare and valuable, but one area I want to show you here is on the bottom right of the front you're going to see an FW before the plate position on the front. Now if you see FW anywhere on your $2 bill, that means your banknote was made at the Fort Worth, Texas facility. The only other area in the US that makes paper money is the Washington DC facility. So if you see FW, that means it was made at the Fort Worth, Texas facility. If you see no FW and it's blank, that means it was made at the DC facility. Pretty cool, right? Well, the main reason why this bill sold for 1,560 bucks is going to be the grade. So how do you get a 70 grade? Because that is the perfect grade when it comes to paper money. It comes down to a few things. First of all, obviously got to be no tears, no pinholes, no stains on your bill. Next, there cannot be a single fold anywhere on the bill. Even if it's a small corner tip fold, you got to have no folds. Lastly, the margins have to be near perfect. So what do I mean by margins? If you look at the white border around the bill on the front and the back, those are the margins. Now, the more perfectly centered the margins are, the higher the grade can go. And that all comes down to the cutting machines when the bills are produced. Now, if I took the 70 and I put a fold right down the middle, it would immediately drop the grade down to a 58 and the price would tank. So do not do that. Keep your bills flat and try to find bills that are nicely centered that have no folds on them because those are the banknotes that are going to fetch the most money in auction. 2,040 bucks for this 2003 $2 bill with a nice little serial number here. So you've got a bunch of zeros and a bunch of fours. This is a really collectible banknote for any collector that likes $2 bills you can see it is a Fort Worth Texas issued bill by that little FW there and this is a company called PCGS Banknote you've got the two best grading companies in the world are PCGS Banknote and Paper Money Guarantee this one got the perfect grade of 70 that is why this $2 bill was able to sell for 2,040 bucks $3,600 for this 2003 $2 bill this one got a 66 grade okay not as high as the previous ones but something very special about this bill allowed it to sell for $3,600 and this is what it is. So I want you to look very closely at the serial number. Now at first glance it won't look that rare but think about it. This bill goes from 9 all the way down to 2 in sequential order. This is what we call a descending ladder serial number. So a lot of people would just clearly glance right over this but if you're looking through $2 bills make sure you find any serial numbers that you think look really cool because this one goes from 9 all the way to 2 in consecutive order and you can also have an ascending ladder which goes from two all the way up to nine or from one all the way up to eight you get the idea here guys a rare serial number is going to increase the value of your two dollar bill now if you want to learn more about rare serial numbers how to grade your paper money we have a completely free coin and currency ebook down below pick that up we recommend that as the first step before you try to sell your paper money once you've read over the basics in that book what you're going to want to do is contact three paper money experts that know what they're doing. Do not go to a pawn shop. They will rip you off. I can nearly guarantee you that. Get the opinion of at least three different coin shop owners or currency dealers. And if they all tell you about the same thing, then your paper money is unfortunately just not rare. But if they want to pay a lot of money for your bill, more than you expected, then it might be worth shopping around a little bit. But please don't waste their time. They have businesses to run to, employees to pay. So do understand that this is a business at the end of the day. But please, if you have something rare, make sure you maximize that value. Get multiple multiple opinions before you go ahead and sell your bill because someone was able to get a nice little payday here of $3,600. Looking at the back of this $2 bill, it looks like someone just cut the corner completely off, which would clearly decrease the value, but you can see this one sold for $4,080. It's only when you flip it over to the front, you can see that there's a big issue going on here. This is what we call a printed fold error. So if you didn't know during the printing process, here's a nice little nugget of information if you stayed during this whole video. When they're printing paper money, the back of the bill is the first print. The second print is everything you see here in black, except that black seal. That is the last print. But you can see here that the first print happened, which is the back of the bill. The second print happened, which is the front of the bill. And then after the second print and before the third print, that corner got folded over. Then the third print came down, which is the seals and serial numbers. And that the district numbers, which is that number seven around the bill, that came on top of the print, causing this really cool error. So if you flipped that corner back over, there would be no seal underneath there
there because the seal got printed on top. Pretty cool, right? That's why this bill was able to sell for 4,080 bucks. If you enjoyed this video, it would help us out tremendously if you smash that subscribe button. We will see you in the next one.